a group called Vectra Threat Labs uh, took a close look at a generic $30 off-the-shelf D-Link webcam. So IoT. Um, uh, and and uh, I'll just summarize what they said because they, they put it together beautifully as well as I could. They said, reports of successful hacks against Internet of Things devices have been on the rise. Yeah, because of Internet of Things devices are on the rise. Uh, and apparently we're going to have buttons on <laughs> buy it now buttons on all of our things from Amazon. Most of these efforts have involved demonstrating how to gain access to such a device or to break through its security barrier. Most of these attacks are considered relatively inconsequential because the devices themselves contain no real data of value, you know, no credit card information or privately identifiable information, so forth, personally identifiable information. They continue, the devices in question generally don't provide much value to a botnet owner as they tend to have lots of bandwidth but very little in terms of CPU and RAM. However, these devices get more interesting to sophisticated attackers when they can be used to establish a persistent point of access in a network. Putting a callback backdoor into a webcam, for example, gives a hacker full-time access to the network without having to rely on infecting a laptop workstation or a server, all of which are usually under high scrutiny and may often be patched. On a tiny device, there's no antivirus and no endpoint protection. In fact, no one thinks of the device as having software on it at all. This makes these devices potentially inviting for persistent attackers who rely on stealth, stealthy channels of command and control to manage their attacks. The downside for the attacker is that this class of devices doesn't usually have any persistent storage that is really usable. So, for example, you know, the malware that users are typically downloading on their PCs, it, you know, it's megabytes, but they've got terabytes of hard drive. So that's not a problem. These things are typically really lean. So these guys continue. Instead, they use NVRAM, non-volatile RAM, to store configuration and the flash ROM to store the running code. So the attacker's hope for real persistence rests on being able to control what will be in the flash ROM. In this blog, we will explore how difficult it is to create a new flash image that could contain all the tools we need to have a real persistent backdoor to the network on which the device is installed. Once we've such a flash image, putting it in place would involve, quote, updating, unquote, an already deployed device or installing the backdoor onto the device somewhere in the delivery chain. Remember, this is sort of the, this is one of the things that Snowden talked about years ago. In other words, before it is received and installed by the end, uh, end customer. For this experiment to be meaningful, it's imperative that the device continue to perform its normal function. Otherwise, it would immediately raise suspicion or cause the customer to replace the device with a working version. Now, uh, I'll, I've, I've skipped most of their blog posting, but Kaspersky picked up on this and summarized it in a few lines saying the report explains the attack against a $30 D-Link Wi-Fi webcam starting with the researchers being able to dump the contents of the device's flash memory chip for analysis. This particular device's firmware included a U-boot and Linux kernel and image. They were also able to dump the context of contents of the Linux image and access its file system. And, you know, this all sounds very much like what we know people are doing with routers all the time. So here's, you know, something of sort of similar power that just looks like an appliance with much less sophistication than a router, but it's running Linux. Where they found, writes Kaspersky, an executable file 
used to verify and update the firmware by analyzing the process by which the firmware is updated, they were able to remotely add a connect back SOX proxy to the Linux system. So essentially this says that this particular $30 IoT webcam can be remotely hacked and a backdoor added to it by updating its firmware because taking one device, which allows all of its contents to be dumped, and here's, you know, and this now we're seeing this is a recurring problem that is sort of a recurring theme of Internet of, of Things devices, is that if you can dump them, you can reverse engineer them. And so they figured out how the update system is protected and broke its protection in order to install whatever they want. So I, I, it's no, I doubtless the case that it would be possible to make this more secure, f to, to, to actively thwart this kind of attack. You know, I, and, you know, we see, for example, that uh, our, uh, our iOS devices, they've got all kinds of strong protection against malicious updates. This webcam doesn't. It's a little $30 gizmo that you, you plug into your network. And so the refrain is, we don't want this on our primary Wi-Fi network. Give it its own network. Um, it's, you know, I'm, you know, we're still in the early days of Internet of Things, and they're just not secure yet. I, I think uh, we know that there's some work being done by various standards committees on establishing some, some security operability standards for Internet of Things devices, that's good, but it'll take a few years for that to happen. And then we know how, how non rapidly the industry tends to adopt new standards. Just, you know, look at any of them IPv6, uh, SHA 256, and what a problem that's been, and so forth. So I just, the, 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 the standard operating procedure is going to have to be either get a split network Wi Fi router or a second. Wi-Fi hotspot, set it up with its own network and, and use that for your Internet of Things stuff. And hot on the heels of this, somebody tweeted me a, a, a somebody else's tweet, so a, re, a retweet showing a screenshot from the, and I won't say the name of the app, which is, is Amazon's uh, uh, Echo name. Uh, where they explain about how they save the user's Wi-Fi passwords to Amazon's servers. Uh, and in the FAQ, they say, uh, oh, and, and it is optional, but they're, they're painting it as a benefit, which many users may feel it is. Uh, they asked themselves the question in the FAQ, what's the benefit of saving my Wi-Fi passwords to Amazon? The answer, once you save your Wi-Fi passwords to Amazon, we can configure your compatible devices, you know, your compatible Amazon devices, so that you won't need to re-enter your uh, Wi-Fi passwords on each device. So, you know, and, and the way the Amazon supply chain works, if I, when I buy an Amazon Fire TV box, it already is associated with my Amazon account. So presumably... Uh, it's, uh, it's able maybe, uh, to, to, you know, to have my Wi-Fi password in it because Amazon has it because I had previously shared my, I, you know, used some other Amazon device and that they were syncing through the cloud. So again, uh, this is classic trade-off of convenience versus security. Um, and it is optional. So it, it's good that it is, but it's something that uh, users should be aware of. And again, better to have it on, on its own network. Who knows what will be revealed about, you know, any of these, the security of any of these devices over time. I mean, you know, we're, we've spent years following the, the security of a mature family of operating systems 
struggling where security has been a huge focus and and I mean and a big deal and and often a selling point. And so compare that to the infancy of all these gizmos that are in a big hurry to to get into the market and get themselves installed and establish a foothold. You know, they're they're just at the beginning of a decade that we that we've just gone through on desktop computing systems. So the good news is a lot has been learned by the industry that doesn't have to get relearned, much the way Google was able to learn a lot of lessons from the browsers that preceded it when they did Chrome. So they had a lot less pain to go through in, in the beginning. But still, um, th as we know, security is not easy. So I, I just, you know, the number one recommendation has got to be these gizmos, all of these IoT things need their own Wi-Fi network.